March 13th, 1969. You asked why we haven't bombed the mortar locations. Well, we try. The VC use small mortar tubes that they carry with them. They just set it on the ground, send a few rounds on their way to Dongtam, then split. The reason we can't find the VC is because they mix right in with the people. Many of the civilians we deal with every day are undoubtedly VC. However, it is quite a sight to watch the helicopter gunships working over an area where VC are supposed to be, although they usually get away. They fire these miniguns, which spew a steady flow of lead. March 17, 1969. Dear folks, there's nothing much new to report. We're still in our camp in Ambush Alley. They say in a few weeks we'll be going to Firebase Moor instead of near the Cambodian border. Although Firebase Moor is in the same general vicinity of Dongtam, we're supposed to go on more operations there and get into more action. No one here is looking forward to going there. They said the company could stay here if we could find a VC mortar tube a prisoner told us about, apparently the one they've been mortaring Dongtam with. So far, we haven't found it. We sometimes round up civilians because they may be VC. They're questioned, ID checked, and then let go again. If we find any young men, they usually are VC. March 25th, 1969. Dear folks, we've been quite busy for the last couple of days. We finally moved out of our old base camp and had to tear down all the bunkers and load all the sandbags on trucks. There were perhaps 100,000 or so sandbags. Then we had to unload them at Firebase Moor, which is supposed to be our next base camp. April 12th, 1969. Dear folks, on the top of this page you will notice a clever replica of the Combat Infantryman's Badge. The CIB is awarded to soldiers in combat situations, infantrymen on the line. I received mine a week or so ago. If you've been in two wars, they put a little star in that gap in the wreath. I've seen one guy with two stars, meaning he was in World War II, Korea, and now Vietnam. Those little symbols surrounding the CIB are octofoils. They are the insignia of the 9th Infantry Division. We wear such a patch on our left shoulder. In the past week or so, we've been going on quite a few eagle flights. That's when we ride helicopters to our destination and sweep the area. On one occasion, the helicopter gunships fired quite extensively into an area where they were known to be about 6 BC. Then we were put down, we found no resistance, thank goodness, and found many young Vietnamese hiding in bunkers and in streams. Most of them were probably VC, however we only managed to find three weapons. Altogether we took about 40 detainees back with us on the choppers. Unfortunately, many of the guys treated their prisoners roughly. It's understandable for them to take out their frustration against the enemy, but beating them up doesn't accomplish anything. We were reprimanded for the treatment and told not to molest future prisoners. It was uh, quite a wet area, and I found four leeches on my legs, small ones. It reminded me of Humphrey Bogart in The African Queen and all the leeches he got pulling the boat through the river. April 23rd, 1969. You mentioned me not being too aware of that attack on Dongtam. Well, it's just that Dongtam gets attacked practically every night of the week. Of course, that was a particularly heavy attack. Just the other night, we had to go into the bunkers three times and await the all-clear signal. I could hear distant explosions, but you hear them all the time at night. Usually, however, you hear outgoing rounds rather than incoming. May 11th, 1969. Dear folks, 
Well, here I am celebrating my 23rd birthday at Firebase Moor. After spending the better part of the day roaming around the Plain of Reeds, while our platoon leader kept on throwing grenades in abandoned enemy bunkers. Oh, well, it could have been worse. Last night I had a pretty good time in Dongtam, and tonight we don't have to go out, although we do have bunker guard. May 24th, 1969. Just the other day, our company was moving through the country near Moore, and we were attacked with at least five automatic weapons. One of our Tiger Scouts was hit in the stomach. I think he'll be all right now. Our forward observer was killed. He's the officer who calls in artillery on enemy positions. He was a young second lieutenant, seemed like a nice guy. Later that night, we were hit again and had three men wounded. It was about the worst night for the company since I'd been here. The first time we've had anybody killed since before I came here. June 4th, 1969. We've been getting into quite a bit of action lately. On the first night of this 48-hour mission, we were fired upon just as it got dark. Nobody was hit, but they came pretty darn close. This morning, we got into a firefight and succeeded in chasing away the VC. Again, nobody was hit. We discovered their base camp and blew all their bunkers. A guy in our squad discovered a fully loaded AK-47 rifle. Quite a war souvenir. June 12, 1969. We spent a week at a place called Mukwa on the Cambodian border. The area there was completely wide open plains with nothing for miles and miles. There were some wood lines, but all very thin. There weren't any people at all outside the town of Mukwa. We made no contact with the enemy or his booby traps, so it was really better than it is here around Moor. From the camp at Mukwa, we could see a lone mountain on the horizon, the first I've seen since arriving in Vietnam. I was told the mountain was in Cambodia, which was only 6,000 meters from our camp. July 17th, 1969. We'll be back in Dongtam after our last operation and last time on berm guard at Moor. Firebase Moor will then be turned over to the Arvin. That'll be in about five or six days. Yes, our company has only one operation left. <laughs>